Hey, how's it going? This is Chad Haig reporting from Southern India. Welcome to another Missing Link Short. Uh, today we're going to try something new where we record this uh, with my laptop and microphone rather than borrow my wife's smartphone. Um, not to say that I won't do that anymore either. There's a time and place for that. Let's just go ahead and try now to record from this standpoint and talk about, once again, um, a reaction to the news of the day as it happens in real time. Now, the news of each day appears to be just how much more ridiculously incompetent, stupid, and um, blatantly failing in front of everybody uh, Disney can be. And they have outdone even themselves once again. Now, you turn to the news today, you will have noticed um, that uh, Disney has now decided that the best way to um, retain its ever-shrinking audience of TV viewers, or the ever-shrinking number of people who bother to find it worth their time to spend a hundred dollars a month to have cable in the first place that's fewer and fewer people all the time well um disney decided that it would be a great idea to um win back uh, what few people remain within its tv watching audience by um simply cutting them off there's something of a strike going on not only in hollywood where the writers have decided that the best way to um fight for more money in exchange for them not doing any work because these are the same people by the way um who are demanding very high races who um, have now come up with an original idea now for about a decade. Every movie out of Hollywood for about the past 10 years has been a remake in which it's almost like they're trying to destroy what little remaining dignity there might be associated with Hollywood by um, just simply uh, taking our uh, fond memories of films um, that we saw when, back in the 80s and 90s, especially the cartoons, and dragging that through the dirt, souring our memory even of the time when we were children that we enjoyed these films. And the um, Snow White debacle is only the absolute absolute worst example. It's the uh, maximization of intensity of a trend which has been ongoing for about 10 years. These are the same people in Hollywood who um, decided that uh, making millions of dollars to not think of any ideas and actually to ruin what they had parasitized from other people um, generations before them, um, they demanded even more money only to find that this time, unlike in 2008, um, their refusal to show up for work um, was met by actually indifference by many people who didn't even know they were gone until they heard about it, like on YouTube. Um, so whereas the writer's strike was something in like, what, 2007, 2008? Um, which was noticed back then. Nobody even knew that they were gone now. And so too, Disney has taken um, a page from uh, that playbook and has decided that the best way to um, win back their few remaining cable TV viewers um, is to not show up for work today. If you tried to tune into the Disney Channel on TV today um, through the... Um, provided that um, services about 15 million American homes, um, you will have seen um, a message saying something along the lines of, sorry for the inconvenience, but this program ha has been removed from this cable ser service provider by the owner, something along those lines. And um, it's not just Disney, which nobody really watches anymore. I don't know about you. It's been about 20 years since I watched Disney. I remember back in the olden days um, when they had all of those original films, like uh, the names escape me, Johnny Tsunami and... Um, uh, I actually cannot remember all the names, but you know what I'm talking about. The movies like Johnny Tsunami, there was also one about uh, some skateboarding guys, what is it, uh, Brink? Uh, those um, days back in the late 90s and early 2000s was the last time I watched the Disney Channel, and even then, it was no longer really anything having to do with Disney. The days when you could uh, turn on and actually expect to see cartoons with um, Mickey Mouse um, was further back even than that. That was more like the 80s. Well, I don't even know what they're showing on Disney now. Probably um, just um, more of the same sort of garbage you see them putting out on, on films that nobody wants to watch, um, all, uh, only with an even lower budget. But at any rate, even if you had tried to watch that today, among the dwindling number of people who uh, still do that, you would have just found a blank screen. And the reason for this, the reason they thought it would be a great idea to just not show up to work was um, really the same as the Hollywood strike. Uh, they think they can just get more money. So um, Disney has a very strange sense of entitlement, as exemplified by this, because um, they themselves have um, lost about 60% of their stock value over the last two years. Isn't that right? Um, they've been losing billions of dollars running the streaming service uh, Disney+. Plus. Um, they've um, had a massively lower park attendance. I remember back when I was in middle school, family members would say, if, if, you, if you go to Disney World in Orlando, Florida, you're going to be waiting for over two hours for each ride. You wait for over two hours for a roller coaster that's over in a couple minutes, right? Two hours for two minutes is how things were back then. But people are willing to do it. They're willing to save up all year into a fund to be able to go to Disney World during the summer because it was that big of a deal. Well, those days are long gone. Disney World now looks like something of a ghost town. Um, 
maybe the fact that they have raised their prices 4,000% since their founding. So you think there's really bad inflation in the economy, and like as than 10%. Uh, well, Disney's inflation is 4,000%. That's how much more expensive it is to go to Disney World today than um, it was when they were founded back when your parents were kids or whatever. Um, well, um, they decided um, as a company that's um, driven itself into this, it, it, they've dug themselves into this pit of losing so much money simply through their own incompetence greed, stupidity, and ultimately laziness. These are people who um, think that they um, can make more money by not showing up to work today because for years now, they've basically not been showing up to work in the sense of they haven't really been doing their job, have they? And um, the reason that they're applying the same strategy now to um, cable television, blacking out the channel as, a, as an act of extortion um, to force um, them to get their way is um, simply that um, the uh, they could not reach an agreement with the cable service provider about uh, how large the fee would be for them to carry the network in the first place. Now, back when the days when Bill O'Reilly was still the most watched guy in cable news, um, he noted in retrospect in a recent interview that um, Fox News eventually, when it became the most watched news, say, 15 years ago, when Bill O'Reilly was still number one back in like 2009, 2010, that sort of time, um, they uh, charged a very large fee for cable service providers because it was good for the cable service provider themselves. They'd get millions of, millions of customers watching this, and it was a good deal for everybody. So it was kind of understandable why the most watched cable news um, channel would demand a high fee just for the cable service provider to carry them. But Disney really doesn't have that sort of advantage to um, bargain with, do they? Um, this is a network which has been losing, what, 60% of its stock value over the past two years, and um, on a service which fewer and fewer people have. You know, back 15 years ago, cable TV was still more or less universal um, within homes in America, but now I'd be hard-pressed to think of anybody. I know even, it used to be the case that only the old people you knew in America um, still had cable television, but it's to the point now where even they don't have it, even they're either on the internet or maybe just doing better things with their time, uh, maybe tuning into AM radio for the news, because at least that doesn't cost $100 a month for you to just flip through the channels and say, well, honey, there's nothing on today anyway. I'm paying $100 a month to say there's nothing on every time I do this. Um, so Disney um, reflects the kind of incompetence, laziness, and pathological greed that is characteristic not just of the idiots running the entertainment industry the, these days um, as reflected all across Hollywood and, and it's the music industry, etc. Um, rather, they're exhibiting the kind of behavior you see of declining pseudo-aristocracies at the very end of an empire. And if you look back over history, you might find similar behavior in the French aristocracy at the end of the 18th century. You'll probably find similar behavior with the Roman aristocrats before um, Rome was officially um, taken over by the Goths. And um, this is something which, of course, is um, merely a microcosm of the same behavior you see in Washington, D.C. Um, their um, response to tanking the global economy, especially the American economy, to the point now that um, the average house in America has become so expensive through their, the Fed's own reckless money printing and stimulus that um, the average house payment now is something like $5,000 a month, for which you'd have to make um, like $200,000 a year. It's not even enough to have a six-figure salary. Like when we were growing up, you know, the six-figure salary was the most coveted thing in the world, right? And it's, even that is considered too poor to afford a house now. Um, you have to make like $200,000 a year now just to qualify for a mortgage at high interest rates, which leaves less well under 10% of Americans um, able to get something as basic as housing. We know about the inflation at the grocery store, $30 for a little piece of steak meat at Walmart. Um, and the examples go on f so far beyond that. Uh, but uh, we know who's responsible for this. The um, idiots in DC who claim to be the smartest people in the world um, are the ones whose bad policies drove the economy into the ground. And in response to that, they're demanding even more money. Right? There's this whole debacle a few months ago about raising the debt ceiling. This is basically their way of saying, um, you should thank us for destroying the economy by letting us borrow even more to line our own pockets with. And Disney is doing exactly the same thing. It's literally the same thing. We've run our company into the ground, 60-something percent loss of stock value, um, and it's only going to get worse when Snow White is 
eventually release it will be the poorest performer in disney's entire history and will drive the company even further down the rat hole of uh, inevitably tending towards bankruptcy um but um in response to this blatant display of incompetence and idiocy they're asking for even more money they're they're putting a figurative gun to these cable pr service providers heads and saying um you who are also losing a ton of money on a service nobody uses anymore you need to give us even more money um simply to carry our shows that nobody watches, uh, not in meritocratic response to anything we've actually done better lately. No, we simply want the more money now because we've got um, a, a shortfall elsewhere. We've lost money elsewhere in our business due to our own incompetence, and we're going to force you to make up for it. And um, thankfully, um, admirably, the uh, cable service providers are not going along with this bullshit. Um, they are standing up to Disney, and the best thing that could happen, honestly, is for Disney to just be cut from all the cable service periods because they're not producing anything worth watching anyway, and nobody's going to be watching them within a few years anyway when cable inevitably goes through a major um, um, restructuring uh, to become an obsolete technology.